AMD has been making a lot of waves lately with their Ryzen processors, specifically the AMD Ryzen 5 with Radeon graphics and also the Ryzen 7. So when Lenovo hit me up to check out their all new two in one, the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5, a 14 inch two in one convertible running the Ryzen 5 processor, I quickly jumped on it. And I'm glad I did because this is a really impressive processor that AMD has produced. Really good performance, very good thermals, and you can game on this laptop. It has a really nice 14 inch display and it also comes with a pen. That's right, good performance at a great price. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and review of the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14. Coming up. And of course, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit was provided by Lenovo. Once this review is done, I'll be sending it back to Lenovo. And with that out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, inside the box, of course, is some documentation, warranty information, and you get a 65 watt USB-C power adapter. And they also give you an extension cord. Now, I love the fact that the $599 price point gives you the pen included at no additional cost. They also give you a pen holder that sticks into the USB port. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Now, of course, you get the unit itself. Now, this is a plastic build, but it has a really nice soft coating on it. It actually feels really good in the hands. It's actually a more premium feeling device than you might think. And I'm really happy to report that. Now, as far as ports are concerned, on the left side, you get a power port, an HDMI port, a USB-C port that does data charge and display out, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side, you get your power button, a full-size SD card reader, and two USB-A ports. Now, what's interesting is they give you that power port, although the USB-C adapter is included in the box. That's pretty interesting. And for those wondering, you can sort of open it with one finger, but not quite all the way. Now, this is a familiar keyboard we've seen before from Lenovo that uses those smile-shaped keys, good tactile feedback, decent key travel, not the best key travel, of course, and it also has a multi-stage backlight. So far, it's all working pretty well. No complaints on that front. It also has a precision touchpad, and it works pretty well. It's responsive, and your two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth, and all the Windows 10 gestures are working as advertised. Okay, let's talk about the display. I would say it's a good display, not a great display. Let me explain. What we're looking at here is a 14 inch IPS display. It's a touch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That of course is a 16 to nine aspect ratio. That makes it a very good choice if you wanna watch Netflix, YouTube, or consuming media in general. It actually did a really nice job. It's got some pretty deep black, some pretty good contrast, although not the best in terms of the coverage of color gamut. It does a decent job in that regard, but then again, Again, we're at 599. We're not expecting top end display here. But having said that, it's a very nice display. Now, as far as the brightness is concerned, it gets about 250 nits in terms of brightness, and it is a glossy display, so you may have some issues in direct sunlight when you're outdoors, but indoors, it's perfectly fine. And it's good to see pretty slim side bezels, a minimum top bezel that houses the webcam and a chin on the bottom that's not too noticeable, which is pretty good. Although you will be using this as a tablet, so you'll need some place to hold and hence you get that bit of a chin. Overall, this is a very good display. I just wish it got a little bit brighter. So this is the front facing camera on the Flex 5 14 inch 2 in 1. Uh, it's a 720p. 30 frames per second webcam, uh, good for Skype, good for video conferencing, not too bad, not the best I've ever seen, certainly not the worst. Again, at $599, I think this is a really good deal, especially with that AMD Ryzen 5 processor. I've really be, been impressed with the performance out of it. Uh, this has been a very impressive outing by Lenovo, but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, I love the fact that there's a shutter switch allowing you to turn off your webcam, giving you more security and privacy. Now, unfortunately, it's not a Windows Hello camera, so that means you cannot log in with face recognition, but it does come with a fingerprint scanner located below the keyboard that allows you to log in with Windows Hello. It worked really well. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible, you can put it into the tent mode. This is great for consuming media, recipes in the kitchen. Same goes for the stand mode. And of course, there's tablet mode, great for use with the pen. 
Now, as far as the pen itself is concerned, if you purchase the SKU from Amazon, that will come with the pen and the pressure sensitivity worked well. The palm rejection on this device worked well. And I thought it did a really good job for taking notes and sketching out artwork. And the fact that you don't pay any additional money for this is even better. Now, the solution for storing it is okay. It'll get the job done, although you will be using one of your USB ports. In fact, both USB ports will be blocked when it's in use. So that's a little bit of a negative. Now, when it comes to the audio, I'm happy to report that it has top firing speakers, which I really do like. They get pretty loud. There's even a hint of bass and the mids sound pretty good. The Dolby audio sound out of this fills up the room rather nicely. I think they did a really good job when it comes to the audio. Now, the only negative, of course, is if you're in tablet mode, those top firing speakers are actually covered up, but they actually sound decent even in tablet mode. But I just wanted to point that out. Okay, to get inside this laptop, all you need to do is remove the T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice that single fan for the cooling. You'll notice that 52.5 watt hour battery. Now, the SSD is upgradable, so that's good. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, so you won't be able to upgrade that. The good news is this unit comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Now, as far as the wireless is concerned, this has 802.11 AC dual band wireless. Unfortunately, it's Wi-Fi 5. The good news is it is swappable. That means you can upgrade it to Wi-Fi 6 on your own. You could actually pick one up on eBay for about $15. Now, as far as Bluetooth, it has Bluetooth 4.2, not Bluetooth 5.0, which is a bit disappointing. But despite that, the Bluetooth worked well, had decent range, and maintained a really good connection. Okay, let's talk about what I consider to be the star of the show, and that would be its processor. That's not something I say normally in my videos, but it's true. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 processor. It's the 4500U. It's a six core processor with integrated AMD Radeon graphics. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This means that this can definitely do some gaming. In fact, I got pretty playable frame rates when I did my 1080p tests. This did well with Fortnite, medium settings. You got about 30 frames per second, which surprise me. GTA 5 lowest settings, you're going to get about 50 frames per second, which is definitely playable. Witcher 3, you're looking at 25 frames per second. Rocket League, lowest settings, 105 frames per second. Basically, this can game, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised on how well this performed. And I thought the thermals were pretty decent as well, although you will notice the fan kick in under heavy load. It is noticeable, but not overly loud, not terribly annoying, but you will notice it. And when I performed the 3D Mark stress test, it didn't get above 80.35 degrees Celsius or 177 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's pretty good. You won't see too much thermal throttling on this laptop. I'm happy to report that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this has a 52.5 watt hour battery. It's a decent size for this type of laptop, and it did pretty well on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. It did eight hours and 56 minutes, and that's pretty good. You can expect all day battery life when you're doing pretty much everyday tasks. So I think they did a decent job when it comes to that battery life. And when you do need to plug in the supply 65 watt power adapter, USB-C power adapter took about two hours and five minutes to give you a full charge. Not too bad. So to bring it all home, can I recommend the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14 inch two in one convertible? And the answer is absolutely. I've been blown away on just how good that Ryzen 5 processor has performed. I like that price to performance value. I like the very good battery life that this gives you. It also has a really good keyboard and touchpad, decent sound for a mid range laptop. Thanks to those top firing speakers, serious power. Once again, from that six core Ryzen 5, great low price. And I love the fact that the pen is included. You also get a pretty good array of ports. Of course, it's not a perfect laptop. They decided to go with a plastic material rather than metal, but it is a, actually a really premium feeling coating on top of it. So not too much of a negative there. Display is on the dim side at only 250 nits. I'd like to see something above 300. And the included pen holder blocks the two USB-A ports when it's in use. I liked it so much, I'm going to give this a score of 87%, making the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14-inch definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the 
Flex 5, 14 inch, I really do like it. A great two in one. First off the bat, this is the graphite gray. Uh, it's like an iron gray finish that we've seen before from Lenovo. Uh, plastic build, but it has a nice soft coating on it. A premium feel to it. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. So I just want to stress that. This is a premium feel to it. Now, I like the fact that you do get the pen included at no additional cost. Although I'm not crazy about this solution to hold it as it blocks two of the USB ports when and it's in use but it does give you something to hold the pen with which is of course better than nothing now as far as the device itself the AMD Ryzen 5 with that Radeon graphics performed really well as indicated by the numbers as you can see you could definitely game on this it handled everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office email web browsing all handled well consuming media was very good on this device so I'm really happy with the performance you could even do 1080p video editing although 4k video editing I would leave with some Something with a dedicated GPU, uh, something a little bit more beefy. This is a really good price to value ratio in my opinion. Now the couple of negatives that I did point out, of course it's not a metal build as I said, but it still is premium nonetheless even with the plastic build, but the display doesn't get bright enough. In fact it's 250 nits which is perfectly fine for indoor use, but outdoor use with that glossy display uh, it's a no go. So you're really going to be limited to where you can take this in realistic situations. You want to make sure it gets bright enough. I would like to see something more than 300 nits. That's not what we get with this laptop. But at this price point, we can understand where they went with this. And again, they wanted to stave on battery life. And speaking of the battery life, the 52.5 watt hour battery that this does have, it did well. You're looking at almost nine hours, depending on what you're doing with it, of course, everyday tasks. You can get all day battery life. Of course, if you're gonna really do processor intensive tasks, it will definitely take a toll on the battery. But you're looking at eight to 10 hours uh, depending on what you're doing with this so it's very good in that regard but I'm curious to know what you think let me know in the comment section below the thermals were really good on this I thought that the single fan did well in terms of cooling you will notice the fan when it kicks in under heavy load but that's to be expected I didn't see really any thermal throttling it stayed at a really nice temperature and kept the uh, processing speed at a very even keel most of the time so I thought it did a really good job in that regard so the thermal throttle hasn't really been an issue on this so I'm very impressed with this at $599 I think this is a winner here and I highly recommend it especially those that don't want to break the bank but want to get good processing power again I want to know what you think let me know in the comment section below